So final control, just give me a, a click. If, you're li if we're live, just hold it down for two seconds. We're right in the bottom of a drainage line, so the radio signal is not very good. So hold down the radio and count to five if we're live. Okay, so I'm just going to assume we're live because I can't hear Kirsten in final control. And we are with Inkahuma Pride. And apparently there are six individuals here. Now, I can only see the two lionesses at the moment that are feeding. And so the mothers of the cubs are here on the buffalo kill. It looks like a big old dugger boy that they've caught. That's probably why it took so long to kill it. Now he's a very big buffalo. So I'm trying to see that others are sleeping in the back. I can just, I can, I can just see the remnant or a belly in the in distance. Okay, it sounds like Tingana is actually getting close to going to Juma as well. So, I'll try to call James in a second. Look at that, look at that. Lipstick, lion and lipstick. Bye. Okay. I know Kirsten's trying to talk to me, but I can't hear her. I'm just going to reverse slightly where I might, my aerial might be a bit higher. Okay, now, I, as I said, I'm not 100% sure whether we're live or not. And I'm just going to try. There we go. Okay, I'm just amazing that. I moved a meter and I can hear Kirsty. Um, let's just get a little bit closer so I'm afraid it's probably not going to be able to get take questions when we're down in the in the bottom of this riverbed just because I'm not going to be able to hear but we'll, we'll give it a try so there we go she's busy opening up the stomach oh beautiful lines now I can see a third lioness but apparently there are three four lionesses but apparently all five are here plus a, a male but I can't see him and he must be quite full if he's not dominating the carcass so they're the ones lying up in the in the shade behind now nice big Big buffalo bull, old buffalo bull, probably 12, 13 years old. And maybe suffering a little bit from the drought. And it is a massive feat for these lionesses to be able to take down an animal of this size. Now we have seen them do it live. So, but it took a, quite a long time to kill this particular buffalo. Apparently he was alive for a good, oof, good half an hour or 14 minutes while they were trying to kill him. Now, hi Marianne. Marianne's wondering if it's unusual for a buffalo to still be alive while the lions are, are killing it. Not at all. I think the longest I've ever seen a buffalo take to die was in over an hour and the lions were actually already feeding on it while he was bellowing. And it was also a big bull like this. And you can see how she's using her premolars, like a pair of side cutters there to cut through the thick buffalo skin. So I'm just going to... He's Okay, so Tingana's crossing her over at the power lines. So I'm going to see if James is close by, so I'm going to just let Kirsten tell him. 
that Tangana has crossed into Juma at the power lines. And I think Ephraim is with him at the moment. Okay, let's, let's try to reposition a bit. I think I've got a plan where we can have good comms and a good view. Are you holding on, Dave? above her on a little ridge look at this now I'm gonna I'm gonna keep quiet and let you listen to this so Dave's gonna put the sound up Isn't this amazing? So it's not uncommon for not all the lions to feed after a hunt like this. It's been exhausting to bring down an animal of this size. Oh, sorry, I'm just on the radio. Standing by. Copy, thanks, no problem. So the others are resting. I can only see see the fifth lioness and she could easily be around here now for the Inkahuma's sake let's hope the Birmingham boys don't find this and I'm surprised that white-headed vulture we saw earlier didn't spot this A huge safari live welcome to Bigger Picture, who's a brand new viewer. Really exciting to have you with us, Bigger Picture. Now, Bigger Picture is wondering, is this not dangerous being this close to the line? So the line from her, if we come out a bit there, Dave, you can see here I am. And to her bum there is about, uh, oh, there we go. Dave's got a measuring distance thing. I think it's about six foot. No, a bit longer than six foot. <laughs> I think your measuring device is slightly out, Dave. Mm, that's definitely not four meters. Um, I'd say it's probably two and a half, three meters. Yes, well, it also could be because we're on, on, on the height here. So uh, the reason it's not dangerous is we're in a car. Uh, and a car has only been around for about a hundred years, just over a hundred years. So they don't have an instinctive response to vehicles and they also don't smell like anything they know. So it doesn't smell like uh, any potential danger. It smells like gasoline and, and oil and f hydraulic fluids and stuff like that. And that overpowers most other smells. And lions don't see in detail like we do. So they don't, probably don't know there's a person on the vehicle. It's just this thing that follows them around that is not worth chasing or, or eating. Now, these lines have grown up with safari vehicles around. Look at that, her head's right inside. And if you drive carefully and respectfully around them, they enable you to get incredibly close like this. And we're just very, very, very lucky to work in an area where the lions are this relaxed. Now, I've worked in areas where lions run from cars and it's taken six or three to six months to teach the lions that we're not trying to hurt them, that we're not a threat to them. 
Oh, this is absolutely spectacular. Now, fortunately, these lines are going to be here for quite a while, uh, probably two days or so, unless a male joins um, or hyenas decide to start chasing them. If there is a male here, the hyenas will stay away, but if there's no male, uh, the hyenas in the right number, I think it, it generally works out to be four or five hyenas per lioness um, for them to chase chase the lioness off and it also depends on how full the lions are and how hungry the hyenas are but I think by the sunset safari vultures will have descended I think these trees will be littered with vultures come sunset safari so they've walked quite a long way from where they were last night um, Oh, she's getting angry with the buffalo carcass, <laughs> growling the fact she can't get a piece of meat out of there. Now, I think she might have also thought one of the other lionesses was also coming to feed, and lions can be very aggressive with each other around a carcass. Now, you can actually see there, that is the hip, the pelvis. You can actually see the bone there. And then through that hole there, you can actually see one of the four stomachs. And I'll try to avoid popping that as much as possible, but eventually it will. Now, Cecilia, who's in the UK, is wondering, did any of these lions get injured while taking down this buffalo? Well, Cecilia, it's, it's very difficult for us to tell at the moment. Um, we've only seen one really get up and walk, and she looked fine. Uh, the others are lying down in the shade, so uh, impossible for us to tell just yet. Um, I'm sure we will be spending quite a bit more time with them at this buffalo carcass. So, and we'll be able to see. Now, I've actually seen this buffalo bull before. Now, if we go to his horn there, Dave. And a very distinct break on the tip of his horn. Uh, I've actually seen this buffalo before. I recognize that horn shape. Munchy, munchy, munchy. Uh, you can still see there's lots of flies around. Um, and those flies were probably on the buffalo. Oh, are you full as well now? Oh, look at that belly. You, it's one of, this is one of the moms. I can see suckle marks on her nipples. So that's probably why she's gluttoning so much. Okay, we're going to move down now so we can see them. Um, because she's going to